so obviously when your team is good it's a lot easier to maintain that you already have the resources you need to acquire new players and new talent you've got the talent to succeed and obviously you can just snowball that essentially it is the otp snowball effect more success leads to even greater success but if your team is headed the wrong way it can be really tough to reverse that trend and start to succeed. So today we're going to be going over how to successfully rebuild your franchise. And I'm going to be starting with the Cubs. Uh, the Rockies would be another good one, but uh, ultimately I want to do to a team that just doesn't really have any kind of resource in OTP, a team that's kind of just burnt. Now the big thing about the Cubs is they're relatively quite easy to rebuild because they have a massive amount of money. So if you're due to a team like the Rockies, they've got less cash. You're due to a team like the, uh, if you were to like strip the Raves completely of their prospects, that's an incredibly difficult rebuild. Same thing with like the Marlins. That's why I didn't choose the Marlins because they actually have a really good prospect core. But we're just going to start with a team that has no talent. We're going to treat the Cubs like they are a poor team. We won't spend within a hundred million of our budget or so. We'll, or we'll act like this is like a hundred and forty-five million dollar budget instead. Uh, so we will have less cash to work with, just for the purposes of making this a more average rebuild with a really horrible core. So the first thing you need to do when you're going into a rebuild is determine if you need to rebuild. And in this case, we just don't have a lot of very high-end talent. We don't have a lot of talent overall. Uh, there's no prospect core. We're not going to be able to sustain success. Now, we could probably burn our budget, try to compete for another year or two, but it's just not worth it. At this point, we don't have a sustainable team. We don't have a good team. We're a long shot to be successful in the playoffs, even if we do decide to go for it right now. So, yes, it's definitely time to strip this team down and head into a rebuild. Second thing we want to do is assess our staff and resources. So obviously the Cubs were filthy rich. We're not actually going to be spending all that money. So let's say our resources are decent. Now we got uh, a lot of money in our budgets here. Now what I like to do is set my international free yeah my international amateur free agent budget to five million dollars, and then this is going to serve essentially as my draft budget and international amateur budget, uh, which I'll get to in a little bit. I'm going to set my draft budget to zero dollars. And of course, we're going to rebuild. I always have my player development at 36 million, the maximum, but that's especially important during a rebuild. Now with the scouting budget, I don't really like this to actually be quite low, but during a rebuild, when you're diverting your resources into acquiring new talent and discovering new players, I'm actually gonna set this to half of the maximum. So we're gonna set this to 12 million. Uh, and this is, we're acting like this is a medium market team. If you got a small market team, you might still need to keep this really low. Uh, we could increase it by the time that the season starts if we decide that we've got more money than we expected we would have uh, available. But in the meantime, I just want to keep this at $12 million, make sure that we get quality accuracy and uh, quality scouting discoveries if possible. Now, another thing I want to point out here is our scout is a highly favored tool scout, so we're not too worried about him right now. Now, as for the rest of our financial situation, we got a pretty good... Uh, overall thing going here we got a lot of money coming off the books after the next two seasons and frankly not too much money on the book even right now so we're looking pretty good in that front we still might look to shed some salary but we're looking pretty good now as for our personnel our assistant gm yeah, that doesn't matter our bench coach andy green he's not good we want somebody who's really good at handling development mechanics and aging and he just isn't. Well, especially development and mechanics, considering we're doing young players here. Pitching coach, not good enough at teaching pitching for me. Our hitting coach, not even close to good enough at uh, teaching hitting. Our first and third base coaches, okay, our first base coach isn't too bad at teaching uh, positions, which is important. Our third base coach is really bad, though. And frankly, we want somebody who's even better. Our team trainer, not bad. He's very good at preventing arm and leg injuries, which we like. He's pretty good overall, so I think we'll just stick with him. Now, normally I would, I, it actually is worth it guys to go through every single minor leaguer and try to identify what, uh, staff roles you're going to want to improve, but, uh, 
you're just going to go to sign your staff. You're going to find the players who are the best at whatever you're looking for, and then you're going to get them out. If you want more information on how to assign good staff and what you're looking for in each staff, I will link my uh, staff video in the description for you guys. So the next thing you want to do is assess your roster and your prospects. Who do we have here? So we're going to go to our lineups and check out our starters. we got Wilson Contreras, a catcher. He's awful. Horrible catcher ability. He's not a bad hitter, but he's just not the type of guy I really want a catcher at all. Anthony Rizzo at first base. Not a bad hitter, but I mean, he's really just not all that valuable outside of his captain personality. David Bodie. Awful. This guy can't hit. He can't field. There's no reason for us to be running Bodie at second base. Right at third base. Not a horrible fielder. Decent hitter. He's not too bad. You got Javi Baez at shortstop. He's a pretty good fielder, but he can't hit at all. Like, I mean, Andrelton Simmons is a better hitter than Javi Baez, guys. This is just not a guy that we want on our OTP team right now. Ian Happ in left field. Good defensively in left field, but horrible hitting. You got Jake Marisnik in center field. He's not very good defensively. He's a horrible hitter. This is not looking good. Hayward and right. Pretty solid right field defense. Bad hitting. Uh, so it's not encouraging. Our pretty much our tile lineup is awful. We got Kyle Hendricks as our ace. He's not a bad starting pitcher, but he's nowhere near an ace caliber. Zach Davies very mediocre. We got Albert or Adbert Alzaway, Excuse me. This guy's actually not too bad for a young pitcher. Uh, pretty good stuff potential. He could be effective with a good catcher ability guy. Jake Arrieta just not good. This is a really bad starting pitcher. And Trevor Williams. He's actually not too bad. This is a decent pitcher. So we got some ups and downs in our rotation. Our best three relievers are Craig Kimbrell, who's not great, but not horrible. Rex Brothers, who's actually pretty solid. And Andrew Chafin, who's also pretty solid. But ultimately, we just have a bad rotation and a bad lineup. I'd recommend going through every single player on your team, but for the sake of time, we're not going to do that. Player development page is normally a great time to look at your prospects, but uh, currently that's not available because... The season hasn't started yet, so we'll just go through manually. We got Ed Howard as our uh, one of our better young prospects. He's honestly not that good. He's got a little bit of hitting, a little bit of fielding, but he's not going to play like... He plays second base or third base if he's lucky. He's not all that good. Sergio Alcantara is another effective prospect. He's not a bad third baseman because of his defense. You got Brennan Davis. He's got a little bit of power, a little bit of left field defense. Not a bad prospect. Uh, you essentially especially want to be looking at your top upper minor prospects. This guy's like Nico Horner. This guy's an awesome second baseman. He's absolutely our starting second baseman right now. Uh, we got guys like Ian Miller, who's not a great player, but a decent utility outfielder. Burrow Caraway in the lower minors. Not a bad reliever at all. This is a pretty solid prospect. So ultimately, you want to take a look at all or a good number of your top prospects just to get a feel for where your minor league system is. And we got some pieces, but ultimately we just do not have a core on either side that we want to build around. So next we're going to take a look at our salaries page and we are going to shed salary. Now this means every player who is not absolutely worth every penny and more of their contract is gone. So Jason Hayward is gone. Chris Bryant, We'll consider it. He's not bad, so it's going to depend on what we could get for him. Anthony Rizzo is gone. Craig Kimbrell is gone. Kyle Hendricks absolutely is gone. Javi Baez, probably gone. Zach Davies is gone. Wilson Contreras is gone. Jock Peterson is gone. Ian Happ is gone. Jake Arrieta is gone. Trevor Williams, uh, he honestly might stick around. But essentially, we're trading everyone on our team who's making any amount of money. You especially want to take a look at your longer-term contracts, guys like Hayward and uh, Kyle Hendricks. Because Kyle Hendricks, he's already barely going to be productive enough to warrant this contract. And as he ages, that's going to get even worse value. So Hendricks absolutely has got to get dumped before it's too late. Hayward, it might already be too late to dump him. But we are going to try... And ultimately, his contract's going to get even worse, and no one's going to want it if we do not get rid of him now. So, we're just going to do an example of salary shedding. We'll shop around, say, Kyle Hendricks. This is probably the guy on the team that I think we could realistically and most easily get rid of. So, we're getting pretty good offers here, actually. Drew Waters from uh, the Braves. Micker Adolfo from the White Sox. That's not as good. 
Uh, Josh Naylor from Cleveland, that's an awesome offer. Naylor is absolutely one of the better players in the minor leagues. Now, one thing you don't want to do here is take on big salary guys like uh, Jose Altuve and Trevor Bauer. We'll get into those types of players later, but for now, you're just going to be looking for the best talent that you get offered. And in this case, it looks like it's almost certainly going to be Josh Naylor or Drew Waters. Uh, so in this case, the player you pick here is going to actually depend upon your next step. You're going to determine your ability to compete and then uh, decide your franchise's direction from there. So in this case, we're just going to act like we're able to compete. Now, in my opinion, Naylor is also a lot better than Waters overall, so I would probably be going for him in this situation regardless. But we're going to be trading for Josh Naylor, and I'm just going to take the trade as it is, even though you'd probably work it out a little more to get more out of it. Um, we're just going to do that for the sake of time. You're going to determine your ability to compete. So obviously we have a horrible franchise core. We don't really have anyone coming up. We do have a lot of resources. So if we wanted to trade for overpaid players like Altuve and uh, Bauer to build our roster around, we could probably get a pretty effective team together. But it's just not worth it. We really do need to strip this team down to its bones and uh, start building up a prospect core however we can or a young core. And if uh, you are able to compete, however, what you're going to be doing is trading for players who are going to be high-value defensive players at key positions, so second base, shortstop, uh, center field, and catcher, of course. Now we've already got Nico Horner in our system. This is a great second baseman. He's got quality defense. He's a good hitter. This is pretty much ideal. Guys like David Fletcher are also really good at second base. At shortstop, you're going to want someone like Andrelton Simmons, somebody who's just a pure glove. He's going to add a ton of uh, defensive value to your team without really hurting you too much with the offense, frankly. He's just, guys like this are incredible values for your franchise. You could look for somebody in center field like, say, uh, Manuel Margot, somebody who's got a lot of range, a little bit of hitting ability. This type of player is going to be very successful in OTP as well and could be a core piece of any rebuilding team, or, yeah, retooling team is what I should say. Austin Hedges is obviously a classic catcher pickup, and his teammate, uh, who we could have actually also picked up in the Cleveland trade that we just made for Naylor, uh, Roberto Perez, is awesome. So those high catcher ability guys are going to make a big difference. You're going to look for cheap quality pitching, guys like uh, Corbin Martin and... Uh, Josh Green also from the Diamondbacks. I'm just listing these guys because they're who I know the best. Um, there's a lot of Angels pitchers who are really good. Ranger Suarez is usually a really nice acquisition to make as well. Players like that can be a big deal for your franchise. Those cheap, uh, those cheap starting pitchers who are going to be quite effective. And then you're also going to want to acquire corner hitters who are really good. Guys like Luis Gonzalez, who's just an absolute beast. Probably one of the most underrated players in the entire league in the White Sox system. Uh, I bet OSA's ratings are actually closer to where he is right now than our scouts. And I think even that might be an underestimate. Guys like Paven Smith. Uh, just guys who can rake play corner positions. In many cases, do it reasonably effectively. And uh, just... Give your team some offensive production. In general, teams like that can usually win like 90 games, 95 games even on a good year. Uh, relievers can be somewhat cheap to pick up high or middle to high end relievers, I should say. I'll actually probably make a video in the near future about just building a cheap team uh, and watching it go to work. But in general, it's going to be easier to just strip your team down for prospects and go out that way oh and another thing another guy who's just really effective as a uh, corner hitter is josh naylor of course and if you do decide that you want to just strip your team down and go for prospects the big thing that you want to do is i mean literally just strip your team you want to make sure you're losing as many games as possible or Winning as many games as possible while still handily being the worst team in the league. You want to pick up those top draft picks. They'll make a big difference in terms of the value you can get on your team. Um, you want to make absolutely certain. Or 
another thing you can do to help your rebuild, rather, is to still acquire those undervalued pitchers and hitters. Just don't acquire the defensive guys, because that's going to be the big kicker in terms of a successful team. And once they add value, then you flip them for more prospects or young core players and more guys who can fill that role of a young, undervalued player who adds value and then gets traded. You also want to make sure that you are developing your prospects. And what I mean by that is you don't just get players and then stick them in your farm system. You're managing every guy. You're looking at your Ed Howards and your Josh Naylors. You're making sure your prospects are playing at the appropriate level. So, for example, Josh Naylor, who just got booted down into the ACL, I think he's a much better player than that. I think he absolutely can handle AAA, so I'm going to promote him. He's currently playing left field. I don't like that. I think he's a first baseman long term. Now, this isn't actually what I think about him, but just for the sake of uh, showing you guys, I'm going to go to his strategy and force start him at whatever position I want to train him at. So, for example, if you got like a shortstop prospect that you think is really going to be a second base prospect on your team long term, force start him at second base. Frankly, even for players that you think are at the position they're playing long term, just for the sake of versatility, can really help to force start them at other positions every now and then and get a uh, get some experience there for them. You also want to make sure, obviously, that your minor league personnel are good. You want to have the best guys possible, and whenever possible, make sure that they prefer or they favor prospects, because that will really help your prospects' development. And the last thing to go over for rebuilds is once you start to compete what you want to do. The first thing you want to know is absolutely do not go into a win-now mode. Whatever you do, do not hand out massive contracts to overpaid or older free agents, guys who are going to tank your franchise down the road. Do not make trades with your remaining prospects to acquire guys who are going to be quality players now. What you want to do is make sure you're building something sustainable. Now, if you do decide that you want to go all in, absolutely go for it. But in general, building a sustainable core is going to be a better thing to do. So rather than spend your money on free agents, or at least expensive free agents, it's fine to sign cheaper ones, which I'll get into uh, in another video at some point. You're going to want to extend your younger players. Call up guys like Nico Horner and Josh Naylor and give them cheap, affordable contracts that go for 8 to 10 years. They're on your team for a long time. They're going to be very effective for you. And, of course, they're quite affordable. So it's quite you have a lot of room to move around financially. Even with smaller market teams, generally, this is the case. And it really is a big deal. Front load those contracts, too. So uh, the money you have freed up now... Uh, is going into those players, and then you can reap the benefits of having them on extremely cheap contracts down the road. Uh, another thing, make sure that as your players start to decline or age, so guys like Zach Davies or uh, Jake Arrieta, guys like even Javi Baez and Anthony Rizzo, as those players start to get older, you trade them away for younger talent and you keep refreshing your system. It's that snowball effect. You use your current talent to add more talent and eventually you'll build a roster that's extremely successful perennially with an elite farm. And that's really the goal here uh, in most cases to build that kind of team. Anyways, guys, I hope this video was helpful for you guys on the rebuilding process. Let me know if you have any questions or if you want to see anything more on this topic going forwards. And I'll see you on the next video.